In 1985, John Thompson bought a second-hand gun from an acquaintance in New Orleans. The gun had been used to murder a hotel executive, and John was later arrested in connection with the murder. Before the trial, his picture appeared in the press, and the victim of an unsolved carjacking claimed John was his attacker. He was sent to prison for the armed robbery, and with a violent crime fresh on his record, he was advised not to testify during his murder trial. He was found guilty and sentenced to death. Over the next 12 years, John exhausted all his appeals. Then a private investigator found a sample of the carjacker's blood that did not match John's and a prosecutor confessed to deliberately hiding this evidence during the trial. John was acquitted of the carjacking and granted a retrial in the murder case. In court, the new jury took just 35 minutes to clear him of the murder. He had spent 18 years in prison, 14 of them on death row. I was telling drugs, and it became a part of the drug scene where you buy stolen property from individuals. I just happened to buy jewelry from the dead man and the gun that they used to kill the dead man. Basically, that's how I got into with the, with the murder. They wanted me for questioning. I said, man, I said, I don't know nothing about no damn murder. They said, oh yeah, you know about it. I said, no, you don't. No, I don't. They put my picture in the newspaper the very next day, saying that I'm the killer. I know I ain't committing no murder. I still sure know I ain't committing no robbery. Just chill out, be cool. It's gonna all take its course, it's gonna take its place. The DA decided to ask the judge to set my murder case back and let me pursue, let them pursue with this robbery case first. The next thing he did to me was physically threw away the evidence. The day of my trial, the physical evidence was took out of the evidence room. It never made it to the courtroom. When the DA went and checked that out of the evidence room, he threw it away. He never returned it or nothing. So we never knew that it even existed. They lied to the, the victims. The, the head district attorney told that kid the physical evidence, it was inconclusive. That's why we're not using it. They, they lied. I had nine individuals come testify that I was at work at the time when this robbery took place. Yet they still convict me, give me 49 and a half years. That was the first step. The next thing I know, I'm going to trial for murder. They use all of this false evidence, all this bad information to really pursue the death penalty. September the 1st in 1987 was the day I was shipped to death row. They opened the cell that I was getting ready to go in. I see some belonging. This is a one-man cell. That was my first day experience, me going in the cell that the man that they had just executed and all his belongings were still in the cell. I didn't know how to accept that, man. I was like, I was like traumatized, man. The very next day, they brought me a, my first execution date. I faced it eight execution days myself. I witnessed 12 different guys being executed. Once you come out of the United States Supreme Court, the final court, then everything is real. You don't get no more chances. So my time started ticking. I had one investigator to look at the robbery case. When she opened up um, the transcript, the first thing she see is them requesting to have my blood withdrawal. Then she realized, damn, they must have some kind of physical evidence that had blood on it. This was 18 years later now we're discovering this. Me and the perpetrator had a totally different type of blood. With that, that was how I re received my state of execution. Then as they dig further, they realized it led to clear and convincing evidence that there was, a, a, um, to me, a conspiracy uh, amongst a group of, of district attorneys as well as the judge to throw away some physical evidence. Where is the justice in that? Where is the accountability in that? You know, you know this is not if this happened, it's happened. We, you know, we got evidence where the district attorney signed, used his name to sign to take the evidence out the evidence room the day of my trial. It never was a return. Why is he not prosecuted? Why is we not looking at this as something serious enough to approach? Prosecutors, they got immunity. They can do all of these things and have immunity uh, from any type of prosecution. It's like, 
Wow, what they doing with us? Playing Russian roulette with our life? Our life don't have no value, but the career have value? A career. What you lost, you can't get back. I think that's the hardest thing to deal with, period. The fact that I lost 18 years, that was my youth. They're doing something that they know is wrong, know it's evil, and, and the reward to doing that wrong and that evil is a greater authority, greater power. That's scary. <laughs>